Flipkart, the Amazon of India. It's a bidding war between Walmart and Amazon going halfway around the world as the U.S. giants competed with Walmart coming out on top. This week on Case Studies with the BizDoc. Flipkart. We're going to go through three parts. First, the entrepreneurs and where they came from and how they built the company. Second, all of the growth and millions and millions and billions in investment that happened in the second chapter and the drama in the boardroom that went along with it. And finally, part three, the drama between Amazon and Walmart as they bid for the company with Walmart ultimately coming out on top. Once they got this thing going, drama was the key word. Let's start with the entrepreneurs, Sachin and Benny Bonsal. They actually worked for Amazon, but they had this dream and a heart for entrepreneurship to start something on their own. So they leave Amazon and start Flipkart. This was in this 2007, 2008 timeframe. So here they are operating an online book reseller. Well, they came from Amazon, what else would they do? And in 2008, they were only running about 100 orders a day. And as they moved forward, they began to get progressive and they had a dream about acquiring companies that would be other products that they would get and they were off and running. But there's an important point right here that is really for the Western audience that may be watching this, is really gonna be something that I think is a little unique. In India, COD or cash on delivery is highly preferred. They don't wanna use credit cards and a huge amount of the population doesn't have access to such a vehicle. So they have this great preference culturally and also in terms of risk aversion. And there you had Flipkart was now allowing you to click online to buy something and it would be delivered cash on delivery. It was interesting because 83%, and this was a study that was just done in 2016, so I've got this next to 2010, but this is really 2016 data, which just shows you how the development of like the credit system and just buying online with a credit card is still in its very early stages in India. 83% of people actually prefer cash on delivery. 72% of the people in the cities prefer it that way, 90% rural. So you can see how starting in the cities, there is some like one in four now that people will use a credit card. Whereas out in the rural areas, nope, it's, it's cash on delivery. Nonetheless, this was a key tipping point that when they added cash on delivery as a means to accept payment. So say, we'll take the risk, you click, we'll have somebody ship the product, we'll bring it out to you, and then it's cash on delivery when you purchase it. That led to a really inception point of the growth curve on Flipkart. So let's take a look at this because we're gonna see some similarities between this and Uber in terms of the investment and how kind of this virality and e-commerce kind of come together. They raised a Series A in 2009, raised about a million dollars, then, Halfway through 2010, $10 million. Series C, in the middle of 2011, $20 million. A Series D, $150 million. Well, now you can see those two years from putting COD, the company is taking off, it's starting to expand, and it's justifying a big, big valuation and a big investment. So much so that we get here into 2013, they did two rounds. First, a 200 million, then 160 million in what was a combined Series E, and they are now worth $1 billion. So you're sitting here six years, five to six years is all it was, and all of a sudden they have raised, if you take a look at this, in excess of $600 million, and they have a $1 billion valuation. We get now into this growth and drama phase. Here comes the Series F, and take a look at 2014. Bang, bang, bang. You know, we had 210 million Series F, $1 billion Series G, and a $700 million Series H. You don't normally see Gs and Hs out there. It usually it's now becomes private placement, and that's exactly what would happen halfway into 2015, a $700 million private placement, giving them 24 months from the $1 billion valuation. This thing is on a rocket sled, and it's now worth $11 billion. But there is some stuff going on behind the scenes as to how they were putting it together. So let's drop below the line and take a look at a few things. In 2012, thanks to this large dollar investment, they bought Let's Buy, which was online electronics. Think of it as Best Buy in the cloud in India. Then they bought Mintra, online fashion, in 2014. They purchased them. Then 
we're going to get into the capital D and drama right here. Sachin has a vision for a mobile app only experience. And he actually wants to turn off web access to Flipkart and make it almost exclusively mobile app. <clears throat> the board of directors, including a gentleman named Lee Fixell, which was with Tiger, and I'll talk about them in a minute, he's a key board member and a very key investor, and actually the largest investor at this time in this this era, and he's like, whoa, 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 Sachin. And so a little bit of drama starts as Sachin gets sideways with Lee Fixell. Nonetheless, <clears throat> they want to go app only, and they had done a couple of things. Uh, they did a thing called Big Billion Day in 2014, which included an exclusive relationship with Motorola to get the Motorola G and the Motorola E phones, which were incredibly popular in India. Flipkart had the exclusive to sell them, which was fantastic. The product everybody want, and you can only get it at Flipkart. So Big Billion Day goes, they do $100 million on this day, and it is a PR disaster or a PR opportunity. The disaster was the system actually crashed. People were complaining that they couldn't get their orders placed at all, even when the system was up. There were shortages of things. They, people protested and actually wrote the government saying, I got an email two days later where it says that there's a shortage and they can't ship my phone. Well, they didn't pay anything, but they also didn't get anything, and they were pissed off. And so they're writing letters to their congressmen, basically, in India, and expressing that. <clears throat> in 2015, they said, okay, we've got new scale, we've invested in IT and our back end, and it's going to be big billion day 2.0. And they did $300 million over a three-day period, and they started pushing app only. Well, there's a couple things that happened here that had very mixed results. So Sachin is emboldened by the fact that he sees this working, even though one year there was some real uh, struggles and the following year you know, they got it right. <clears throat> what was also going on here is they forced Mintra, one of their own properties, remember the online fashion group that they bought, in to do web only. And you can see the growth that was going like this. When they did that to Mintra on fashion, 10% negative growth year over year in Mintra's revenue. So everybody goes, whoa, we're going like this and we managed to kill Mintra. Well, they came back in 2016, they said, okay, 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 it's gonna be on the app, but we're also gonna relaunch the Mintra web. All of this comes together here, where we've seen all this money. Look, all of a sudden, they take a year off raising money to do what? The board fought, and there was a lot of drama on it. And I want to take you through it a little bit and take you through um, the story of what was going on with that board. This is Lee Fixell. In 2009, he met the Bonsall brothers, Sachin and Binny, and he really had a close relationship with Sachin. So here you have Lee Fixell at Tiger, and he is investing in India, and he is a believer. And stepping back for a second, for people that don't know Tiger, Tiger, incredible investment group founded in 2001 by this guy, Chase Coleman. And he originally had a hedge fund, but he had a portfolio of tech investments in the internet and tech, that is, in the US, China, and India. And he sent to India two guys, Faraz Dewan here and Lee Fixell. And Lee Fixell, he went big, took about $2 billion, was investing into India all over the place, and about half of that was put into Flipkart. So you can see what I mean. Tiger was a massive investor in Flipkart. Well, 2014 to 15, man, Lee Fixell was on this just absolute investment Series A binge. He was putting Series A money into all kinds of uh, companies in India, even as Dewan, his partner there, was getting kind of concerned, says, you know, we really need to show some uh, returns here. Well, Dewan and Fixell kind of clash, and Dewan left um, Tiger, leaving Fixell to lead this whole group. So we can already see that Fixell is kind of a bold guy that does things, you know, his own way and his own style. So now you can see that Lee Fixell has a very strong personality under himself given what was happening at Tiger, but you also have Sachin who has a very strong personality himself that says, I got ideas and I'm going to put them into play. So nonetheless, those two clash. And when they clash, they clash big. And Fixell eventually in 2017 puts this guy in the CEO seat, Kalyan Krishnamurthy. So we now have a new CEO and a founder who's been bumped up to chairman. Go take a look at the Uber case study and look what happened to that CEO. Sometimes founder CEOs, their ego and decisions get up to a place 
where change is forced by the board. And if you lose the board's support, later you're not going to get a free pass on some of your mistakes. The board is going to move you even though you may own 50, 60 percent of your own company, the board's going to move you in favor of new leadership and that's what happened here regardless of what you may think about Lee Fixell and what he was doing at Tiger. So now we have the new CEO in place and look what happens in 17. They raise four billion dollars. If you take a look at what was going on there, they've got 40% market share and they raised four billion dollars in 17 and that is barely 10 years from when they started. And there is only one word for that and that is damn, that is a lot of market share in India and that is a lot of money. And it was SoftBank that would now become a larger investor than Tiger, investing 2.5 billion of the four billion dollars. So that takes us up to here. And along the way, just to put it into perspective, I've been talking about the investment dollars, but there's been a very steady run in the revenue. And let's take a look. 16, 2.3 billion dollars, US dollars, in revenue, and they lost 1.3 billion. Hey, they are the Amazon of India. They lose money at an alarming rate, just like Amazon did, or used to in the United States. And then 4.6 billion in revenue up in 17. So you can see all this was running really big and raising a lot of money. There was something else that they did about the time they shifted uh, CEOs is they attempted to go after Snapdeal. Amazon, Snapdeal, and Flipkart combined for almost 100% of the market share in India for this online commerce. And if they had bought Snapdeal, they offered them 700 to 800 million. Snapdeal said, no, we want a billion. And in retrospect, it looks like they should have ponied up the extra 300 million. Lord knows they were able to raise that kind of money. Well, that would have given them about 66% market share, an absolute crushing overlord position versus Amazon. Instead, that deal falls through because of the gap in valuation and what they wanted to pay. So this takes us to the end of the growth and drama because now, as you've seen in my past case studies where you get people and companies raising this kind of money, after the private equity comes debt because you think you can pay it back and you're no longer giving up equity. And with a bank in India, they raised $150 million in debt, which compared to the $4 billion they're raising is like a Starbucks card, but nonetheless, they went off and raised it. We now get to the acquisition. Now, there are conspiracy theorists out there that would say the snap deal was a head fake. They really wanted to make this deal to cause outside interest, oh, like Amazon, like Google, like Walmart, to think, oh my gosh, if these guys are at 66% of India, there goes our opportunity to be in India. I don't think so. I think this was a real attempt to go and make the purchase. Nonetheless, it's interesting fodder for discussion to say this was a head fake to say, oh my gosh, we better buy them before they buy snap deal or come back around on this because then they'll be too big for us to deal with and they'll have a huge presence in India, they'll have power and influence with the government. We don't want all that. And by the way, Walmart was actually only selling as a wholesale unit into India small uh, uh, retailers because they were not allowed by law as a foreign company to actually sell directly to consumers. So there was already laws around there that were trying to protect the home team a little bit. Um, I think there's a little more drama to there than I've uh, uh, illustrated, but you get the point. So now we go to the acquisition and the deal drama. This is now a board fight and a acquirer fight. First, the board fight. You know, you've got Sachin sitting in the corner pouting because he wants a bigger uh, role back in the company. You know, you've got Lee Fixell and the board kind of got Binny a little bit on their side and they're still moving forward and there was so much good news here that it was kind of canceling out some of the drama. Nonetheless, Amazon and Walmart show up. Wa Amazon makes a $22 billion bid, TWE, which stands for the whole enchilada, and Sachin and SoftBank were kind of kind of there. So Sachin kind of had SoftBank in his corner. They kind of wanted to do it this way. And Sachin was hoping that he would have a prominent role with Amazon when the deal is done. Lee Fixell was like, hell no, you're not going to be in a more prominent role if we do this deal. Lee was in favor along with the board and ultimately they would get Binny to go with them to take the Walmart deal where Walmart for $16 billion buys 77% of the company. Now I got this little 
description here, five-ish and 11-ish. At the time, Walmart had something close to $6 billion on their balance sheet in cash, and yet they paid 16 for this. So it means that Walmart took out a big mouthful of debt to get this done. So was it five and 11? Walmart hasn't said exactly what it is. Was it four and 12? Don't know, but it's safe to say that Walmart has at least $10 billion in new debt on the acquisition uh, invoice for Flipkart. They also, interesting, they put a four-year IPO timer on it. So Walmart is looking at growth of the company, and they certainly believe that their operation efficiencies are going to reduce these losses, as well as that there's going to be a public currency out of this. So in four years, it states that Walmart intends to take it public at the acquisition price or higher, but not less than the acquisition price. So the valuation connected to the acquisition price actually is what it is. And then Amazon, they're out of the deal. Google is still in talks to this day. Now, Walmart only has 77%, so Google's got a lot of big data and they're not interested in, in seeing Amazon take off and do things at all. And so uh, Google is more likely to find Walmart to be a friendly partner to potentially come in. And eBay <clears throat> was part of this. Something happened over here where Flipkart actually licensed the name from eBay and was running eBay India. When this deal happens, eBay got a billion dollars from Walmart and they canceled the licensing deal with Flipkart and they said that we're going to relaunch. I really like to know how that works. You got this sort of market share and everything, you get a billion dollars back, you cancel the licensing agreement and say, I'm going to go it alone and relaunch my brand. Well, we'll see how that works. Nonetheless, the deal is done, it's awaiting regulatory approval, but it looks good, and Walmart is going to own Flipkart. So let's talk about Walmart just for a second in the middle of all this. Some people are saying, wow, that was an expensive acquisition, their stock price is going to take a hit. I think this is a strategic deal long term for Walmart, and I think it's one they had to make. Because whether you believe the attempted deal for Snap Deal was a head fake by Flipkart or a real transaction they were trying to do, it still would have spelled trouble for Walmart getting into the Indian market. And they were already trying to compete against Amazon, which seems to be like a blob coming over the top of them in the United States with a little bit of competition also from Target. I think Walmart strategically had to do it. They're battling, they're in a cage match battling in the United States with Amazon and this gives them a play here and if they bring their efficiencies to the table and reduce those losses, guess what? They've got a tremendously profitable opportunity in India with, with a tremendous amount of upside. Remember, some studies are saying that less than 25% of the Indian population has actually made an e-commerce purchase, which means there's huge upside. And if Walmart with Flipkart, with Sachin out and a cooperative happy board and great executives in place, if they can meld that and make it run, they've got a jewel that's going to add to their value globally. Let me know what you thought about this case study. Add the comments below and take a look at the other great content we have here on Valuetainment. And we're also on a mission to get to a million subscribers. And when we do, the first Valuetainment Entrepreneur Conference is coming at you, featuring Patrick Bed David, yours truly, the BizDoc, other leaders as we bring information and education to help make you better, your company better, and those that you touch with that company better still. Until next time, I'm Tom Ellsworth, the BizDoc, and I hope I left you better than I found you.